Hi again, this is Colin, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to apply group privileges to the SEL 3620 that allows you to log in and access, in a very granular manner, different parts of a protected relay. Now, on the 3620, you can have privileges depending on what group that you're a member of. So let's say in Active Directory or on a local group, which is what we're going to create today, I'm a supervisor, and as a supervisor, I get access to the full range of functions on all of my critical devices. Now, I could also be an engineer, and as an engineer, when I log in, I might only get access to the read and the read-write level on the relay, but not necessarily the calibration level settings. Or as a technician, I could log in and only get access to the read-only portions of a relay. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be implementing on the SEL3620 these different groups, and then in Accelerator Quick Set, the different groups, the engineers, the technicians, and the supervisors, and then we're going to apply those privileges to the connection directory that we've built in a previous video. First of all, on the SEL 3620 interface, I'm going to go to Accounts, and I'm going to go ahead and add a supervisor account. And that supervisor account is going to have supervisor privileges to the relays on my SEL 3620. I'm going to go to the local groups, and this is where I create the actual supervisor's group to which the supervisor user will be added as a member. So I'm going to click the Add Local Group button and create a group called Supervisors, to which I will add my supervisor user. Now, when I'm doing local account authorizations, I have to have matching groups both on the SEL 3620 interface as well as in Accelerator Quick Set. So that's what we'll do next. Going over to Accelerator Quick Set, you can see here's my previous connection directory that I've already built. I'm going to go to Tools, Device Manager, Users. I'll go to Local Users and I'll create a supervisor user here. Now, when I create these users, uh, try to make sure that you're using strong passwords. The SEL 3620 requires that you use a combination of uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters, and the passwords at least have to be eight characters long, so do be aware of that. Okay, so I've created my supervisor user. I'm going to go ahead and create my supervisor's group. Now, it does have to be the same case, so notice how I'm using an uppercase S. It does have to match the same group name is on the 3620. Now for members, I'm going to add my supervisor user as a member, just like I did on the 3620. I will go ahead and click OK. So now I'm going to repeat this process for an engineer user and a technician user on the 3620, and I'm going to do the same thing in QuickSet, create a technician supervisor user and group. And then we'll fast forward so you don't have to wait for through that in the video. Now I've gone ahead and I've created and added the engineer and technician users to the engineers and technicians group on the SEL 3620. I've done the same thing in Accelerator Quick Set. I've added the engineers group of which engineer is a user, and I've added the technicians group of which technician is a member. Now the last part of this is to map the groups that I've created to the actual privileges on the SEL relay itself. And with the connection directory that we currently have, we have that one SEL 735 relay. And what I'm going to do is map the privileges for those users and the groups to the actual relay itself. So follow me as we go through that process. I'm going to open up my SEL 735, and then I'll click the Permissions tab. Now this Permissions tab is not going to show up unless the SEL relay is actually below in that tree, the connection directory tree, the SEL 3620, and the SEL 3620 has its Is Managed checkbox checked. On the 735, on the permission settings, you'll see that you'll have this option to add groups and permissions. So this is where we'll actually add our groups that we just created in QuickSet. I'll click the Edit button. I'll click Add, and I will select my engineers, my supervisors, and my technicians groups. The very most basic privilege is actually a connect level. You could simply run the ID command, and that's about the only thing you could do in the relay. So check you know, what model option it is, what current firmware it is. The ACC level is where you have read-only privileges, so you can look at various settings, maybe look at it as a sequence of event report. 
2AC is where you can actually create changes on the relay. So you can clear your history record or you can go through and make a settings change. Uh, and there's various other uh, access levels on most SEL relays as well. Please refer to your individual relay product manual for more information about what the various account levels do on those devices. But suffice it to say, I'm going to add the connect level privilege, the ACC level privilege, and the 2AC level privilege for my, any member of the engineer's group that wants to access this device. The supervisors, I'm going to give all privileges to. In fact, I'm just going to right click, say select all, so my supervisors will have connect, ACC, 2AC, EAC, and calibration level access to this relay. And finally, my technicians, they're going to get the most basic level access. They're going to get the connect level access and the ACC level access to this device. Now, you don't have to do as I did, adding three different groups. I mean, maybe in your organization you only have two different groups or one different type of privilege you want to give to a user. So it doesn't have to be as complex or it could be more complex than what I'm doing right here. When I'm finished, I click Apply. And lastly, I have to upload this new connection directory with the privileges mapped to the SEL 3620. So we'll go through the step that we did in a previous video. Right click on the 3620, Device Tasks, Send. And then I will upload this connection directory to the SEL 3620. So now the connection directory, updated with permissions this time, is available on our SEL 3620. So in a follow-on video, I'm going to show you how you can access the relay and navigate the relay via the SEL 3620 proxy and show how the group mappings that I've instantiated are going to work.